It does take us to our talk of the tape, the rally, just how resilient this market can remain. Let's bring in Kevin Gordon, Charles Schwab. It's good to see you. Welcome back. It's been Thanks, a minute. Scott. Nice to see you. Uh, so, wow, this market's just been incredible. It's been resilient yeah. in the face of so much, theoretically. It's had this nice bounce back. What should we make from it? You know, I think what's nice is that through this mini pullback correction, whatever you want to call it, from late March to mid-April, you, you've removed frothy sentiment as a pretty big risk. And that, that had been a risk from call it mid-November up until March, where you had seen indicators both on the behavioral and the attitudinal side that had gotten way into excessive optimism territory. But of course, as we know from history, that can happen for a while until you get a negative catalyst to tip you over. That negative catalyst, I would argue, probably ended up being inflation, a little bit of this reacceleration that we saw in the first quarter. But now that you've taken that back, earnings season for the most part has generally been pretty good, maybe less less good on the on the sales side. But overall, I think there have been enough catalysts to kind of keep you in this uptrend and sort of that broader picture going back to late October and the late October low of 2023 keeps you in this uptrend. The, the key catalyst, if we want to call it that, I think everybody is sort of coalescing around the idea that the Fed chair changed the game uh, at the meeting. He was not nearly as hawkish as some had feared he would be. Yeah. And that's really why we find ourselves now where we are. You, I have a to that? little bit of a different view, only because if you look at the, the shift in market expectations that we've seen, you know, a lot. I mean, there's been so much whiplash since the end of last year when you really started to get favorable readings on inflation metrics. You know, whether you're looking at it at a three, six month annualized change basis, everything was pointing in the direction of right at 2 percent, maybe sub 2 percent. But if you go back to some of the commentary from Powell himself, December and January, um, you know, there was no major pivot. I know that in the SCP, there was an indication that on average, Fed officials were expecting expecting three cuts this year. But even Powell himself back in January said, we're not going to declare victory. It's premature. Sure. So I say all that to say and, and to sort of reaffirm the point that it's not the Fed that has really changed its tune. It's just the market that's had to adjust. Well, let, let's let's discuss that. OK, we had these hotter than expected inflation reads mm -hmm. and we had a bad GDP read. So, you know, all of a sudden we're sitting there. OK, now, you know, are we going to get any cuts at all? Is he going to come out at the news conference and be really hawkish and is that going to be a problem oh now we have to worry about stagflation so he comes out and he says uh hikes more hikes unlikely Use, uses that word right highly unlikely right uh no stag no flation right yields come down Yields are down considerably since that day. Stocks are up. I mean, it's directly correlated. But if you look actually from so when at the point that the market started to aggressively, you know, sort of price in cuts up to seven, if you want to go through that period from, you know, sort of late fall into the end of the year and at sort of the max point, I guess, was January of this year when you got to seven. At that point, yeah, you would that had coincided with some weakness because you had the correction last year from late July to late October. Um, then, of course, with the turn in yields that helped propel stocks in the opposite direction. But since then, as we've gone from pricing in seven to maybe just one now to maybe two, the market still rallied. So that's a disconnect there where I don't think that the market is purely just trading off what the Fed is going to do this year. No, because we also don't know if, the come, if, the he come out, if he had come out and said or even gave you the glimmer yeah. that uh, another hike was on the table, we would not be where we are. There's, but they've always no entertained way. that not, as not, an option. Not, yeah, but the, the way that he came out yeah. and wasn't nearly as hawkish as some feared has to be a considerable part of the story. And so does the, the sector performance. Let's just take this week. Yeah. Utilities are leading the way, 4.5%. Financials, materials, industrials. You telling me those sectors would not be leading this market if, if rates were still 20 to 25 basis points higher where they were around yeah. Fed Day. And he was hawkish. There's but no even, way. But even if you look at the leadership profile since late March, I mean, you look at what's been leading. And I, and I, and I pick, I'm sorry, excuse me, late February, early March. That's really when you started to see a shift where technology kind of took a step back, hasn't really participated as much since then. But the three top performing sectors since that time, since the, since the, the beginning of March, have been utilities, energy, communication services. So that's a traditional defensive area. That's a traditional sort of deep value area. And that's a growth area that are all leading. I'm not really sure what the market's message is there. So it's not a clear cyclical risk on tone, but it's not a clear all in defensive tone either. I think that's consistent with where we are in this part of the cycle where nobody's really sure how much of a reacceleration this infl in, in inflation is to be believed, whether we start to turn lower from here, that brings cuts back on the table for the Fed. But now you also reintroduce a little bit more uh, on the labor weakness side and the consumer weakness side where, you know, I don't think that we're in dire straits right now because of one 
jobs report that got you down to 175 and payrolls, the unemployment rate ticked up a little bit. You had a weaker claims number this week. It's, it's not enough to make a trend, but you reintroduced some of that, and it fits with at least how we think about the Fed cutting potentially, which is inflation and disinflation, the trend, sets the stage, I think, for them to be able to cut. But what ultimately probably pushes them towards cutting, and, the, and a lot more members have mentioned this, is weakness in the, in the labor market if the unemployment rate was to gain more momentum to the upside.